Hello everyone, my name is Varun. In this video, we are going to discuss about F5 LTM packet capture. We will be discussing about TCP handshake, Wireshark capture and capture using TCP dump utility in F5. For our practical purpose, we will be using one arm load balancer topology where we have a client with IP address 192.168.31.1 which will be accessing the virtual server IP address that is 192.168.31.10 then, then, uh, then the F5 will forward the request to the backend servers that are 192.168.31.5 and 192.168.31.6 and before sending the request to the backend server Big IP will do the source net as well as the destination net. It will be changing the source IP from 192.168.31.1 to the internal self IP of internal interface that is 192.168.31.3 and will be changing the destination IP from 192.168.31.10 to any of the backend web server IP. Before we proceed further, let's discuss about TCP handshake. As the TCP is a connection oriented protocol, so before sending any traffic, client and server or two machines which wants to transfer the packets using a TCP protocol first create a session after which they start forwarding the traffic. In case of load balancer, there are two TCP sessions which are established, one between client and big IP that is the FI load balancer and the other one is between the load balancer and the server. So first the client will establish a TCP connection with, these, uh, with the load balancer then load balancer will establish a TCP connection with the server. In order to establish a connection first client sends a SYN message to the big IP requesting to make a connection. Big IP respond by its own SYN message and the acknowledgement. Then client acknowledge, acknowledges the uh, response from the big IP and the TCP connection is established. After which the big IP establish another connection with the backend servers using the same mechanism. So this is our server that is 192.168.31.5. We will be first doing the Wireshark capture. We have the Wireshark installed in this server. So this is the web server 192.168.31.5 we are, we are going to start the capture on the interface so and this is the uh, big IP load balancer and we have uh, the virtual server configured here So this is the virtual server which we will be accessing 192.168.31.10 and uh, the self IP which are configured in this uh, load balancer is 192.168.31.3 for the internal interface. So when the traffic will be coming on the virtual server 192.168.31.10. Uh, the, uh, the source will be changed to the self IP, internal self IP and the destination will be changed to the uh, backend server. Okay, now we are going to do the packet capture on the Wireshark. So here we received all the packets. So what we can do, we can put a fil uh, filter on TCP uh, port 80. Okay, so 
this is the source IP which is our client IP and this is the load balancer IP so as we discussed with load balancer we have two TCP session one between the client and the load balancer and other one with between the load balancer and the server so this one is the connection between client and the load balancer whereas once this connection is established there is one more connection that is this one which this is 192.168.31.3 is the self IP of the internal interface and this is the IP of the backend server 192.168.31.5 so this is the second TCP connection so first there was a connection initiated from 192.168.31.5 towards 192.168.31.10 which is the virtual server IP the source port is 51087 and the destination port is 80 so first the source sent a send message to the load balancer asking to establish a connection load balancer then replied back with a sin ACK with the acknowledgement of, of the sin sent by the client and its own sin and that goes from 80 port to 51087 then the client in the end sent the acknowledgement to complete the connection after which there is one more connection formed between the load balancer and the server so load balancer IP is 31.3 so 31.3 sent us in to 31.5 asking to establish a connection 31.5 sent us in ACK and then 31.3 sent the ACK so here the connection was established so let's first study the traffic flow in between the client and the load balancer so we will put a filter in order to put a filter in Wireshark for any address you can use IP double DR equal equal IP of the client and we need uh, we need the uh, traffic between the client and the load balancer so we will put another IP of load balancer here so this is the complete traffic flow between uh, the load balancer and the client so first as we discussed client sent a send message with a sequence 0 then the uh, load balancer uh, sent a synac with the sequence 0 and acknowledgement 1 and uh, so what happens with TCP before uh, like before getting an acknowledgement for any pa any traffic sent the the uh, the you know at uh, the end device will not send the traffic uh, the further traffic until it receives an acknowledgement for its first traffic so when the client send a sin then server send a sin ACK then the client uh, then the client again send a ACK after which the actual traffic uh, communication started so after after each traffic there is an acknowledgement from from other side when 31.1 sent a GET request to 31.10 then 31.10 acknowledges it and then uh, 31.1 again send a traffic and then ag again 31.10 acknowledge so in TCP Without, uh, without acknowledgement the uh, the uh, there will be no more traffic flow so in order to you know in order to avoid any kind of uh, you know traffic miss these uh, this TCP uses sequence number so with each traffic it sets a sequence number and for first first uh, send message the sequence number was zero for second when uh, the server sent uh, like load balancer sent to the client again the sin is 0 sequence is 0 and ACK is 1 this acknowledgement means that the that the uh, over here that the uh, client wa client expect the next packet next sequence from the uh, sorry the load balancer expect next sequence from the client should be 1 so whatever is there in the acknowledgement should be there in the next packet received from the uh, from the receiver so in this case when when the load balancer 192.168.31.10 sent a synac to 192.168.31.1 with acknowledgement 1 expect 192.168.31.1 to send the next packet with the sequence of 1 so the next packet between between 192.168.31.1 and 31.10 is this 
and if we check this packet the sequence number is 1 so in order to uh, you know avoid any any traffic any packet miss or uh, it it uses the sequence number so whatever the acknowledgement is sent from from you know uh, from one end to another end the the sending end expect the other end to send the same sequence number for example over here 192 168.31.1 sent a sequence acknowledgement of 1 to 192 168.31.10 so next packet that is coming from 192 168.31.10 towards 192 168.31.1 should have a sequence of 1 so we are checking it for the connection which is established using the source port 51087 so the next packet from 31.10 at port uh, for port 51087 is this one Sorry. Uh, so yeah it was this one so when the 31.1 sent a sequence acknowledgement of 1 to 192 31.10 then 31.1 expect the next packet from 31.10 with a sequence number of 1 so this is the one here when this uh, when the load balancer replied back to this uh, to the client it uses the sequence number 1 now it has it has also sent a acknowledgement of 390 means whenever uh, now whenever 192 31.1 will send next packet to 192 31.10 the sequence number will be 390 so if we check for uh, for communication with uh, from 51087 to 80 the sequence number will be 390 this one so this is the next packet from 51087 to 80 like from 192 to 192.168.31.10 to 192.168.31.10 and the sequence is 390 this is how you can check whether there is there is any packet miss or not so once the connection was established the client sent the get request to the load balancer then the load balancer acknowledges the get uh, the get request and so this this see we have two communication here one from this source 192 to 1681.1 using the source port 51087 other one is using the source port 51086 so first we are tracking 51087 so once the load balancer acknowledges the get request from 31.1 then the load balancer replies replies back with the with the uh, with the web page over here now once once the web page is displayed then uh, for fi uh, for 51087 the the uh, the client acknowledges that acknowledges the web page and then client closes the connection so in order to close the session client first sent a finac to the uh, to the load balancer with a sequence 390 and acknowledgement of 1383 so next packet which is coming from the load balancer that is 192.168.31.10 towards the client 192.168.31.1 for source port 51087 and destination port 80 or, or the source port 80 and the destination port 51087 should be 1383 here it is see the sequence number is always similar to the last packet acknowledgement number this is how you can track whether there is any miss of the packet or not now the load balancer acknowledges the uh, session closer and it also sent a, a finac to close the session and the client acknowledges it this is how the session is closed similarly there is there is a session between uh, load balancer and the uh, server as well so in order to check it the load balancer self IP is 192.168.31.3 and the backend server IP is 192.168.31.5. So once uh, once the uh, session was established between the load balancer and the client, load balancer initiated a session with the backend server using a SYN message. So first load balancer initiated a SYN message towards the backend server and the source port is 41489 and the uh, and the uh, destination port is 80 with a sequence of 0 then the the backend server replied back to the load balancer with a synac and it has sent a sequence of 0 and acknowledgement of 1 
means the next packet which will be coming from 31.3 towards 31.5 will be of sequence number 1 then 31.3 close uh, 31.3 acknowledges the acknowledges the uh, synac from 31.5 and set the sequence of 1 which is equal to the acknowledgement of the last packet and it sets the acknowledgement of 1 now when 192.168.31.5 will send a packet to 31.3 it will again send a set a sequence of 1 which is this one so 192.168.31.3 sent a http get request which it received from the client to the backend server and if we check the sequence number it is 1 here which was sim which was same as the acknowledgement of the last packet then this backend server uh, acknowledges the request acknowledges the request and and give and set send the acknowledgement of 390 means the next traffic which will be coming from 192 168 31.3 to 31.5 will have the sequence of 390 which is this one so when 31.3 replied back to 31.5 it it uses the sequence number of 390 and in the end it this close it closes the connection this is how you can analyze the uh, packet capture using the Wireshark. Now we will see how we can uh, do a same capture using the TCP, TCP dump utility in Big IP. So in order to use the TCP dump utility, you have to go to a SSS session and the command is TCP dump. And in order to check all the parameters, you can use TCP dump minus help command. These all parameters can be used while running the TCP dump in uh, while running the TCP dump in uh, Big IP. So my uh, so the main parameters which are used is TCP dump minus I. Using TCP dump minus I, you can define any interface or a VLAN for which you want to take the capture. So in our case, as we are taking the capture on the internal interface, which is 1.1, so we will use 1.1 here. Or if you if you are using some other interface, you can use that interface. Let's say 1.2. So we are using 1.1. So I'll put uh, sorry, I'll put 1.1 here. Then you can put a filter for particular host or a port or a, for a combination of host and port. Let's say if I want to put a filter for host that uh, for client for our client IP 128 31.1 and for the destination of load balancer i can use this command once i run it it will okay you should use and in between here it will give all the traffic which is flowing between 192.168.31.1.1 which is the client IP and between the load balancer. So if I initiate the connection again, it will show the traffic here. So this is the traffic flow. This is same as what we have seen in Wireshark. First 31.1 initiated a uh, yeah. So first 31.1 send a syn message to 31.10. 31.10 replied with a syn act. So this is these are the flag. S means syn. S dot means act. Dot is act. And then the client replied uh, with an acknowledgement. This is act then the client sent a get request that is a push request push and a push act flag with a push act flag then the load balancer replied with the acknowledgement of receiving that request then the client again uh, send uh, this this is from the another port so client sender is uh, uh, send another send request from port 51304 previous was from 51305 so you can similarly as we analyze the traffic in the Wireshark we can we can use TCP dump utility to analyze the traffic there are other option as well for now we have used this host even if we want for any particular port we can use and 
as well port port number as well and port 80 so over here it will only gives the traffic for that port 80 only so if i initiate the traffic again Okay, so we again got the request. So we can also use the port parameter. If also, if you want, if you want to use any other interface as uh, 1.2, I have external interface 1.2. I can use 1.2 here. Though I have no traffic there, so it will not show anything. Now the other options are, if you want a a TCP dump to be captured in a txt file then you can use the same command and you can use two arrows and just write the file name for example if I want to capture the traffic of this in a text file then I'll just write this now whatever the traffic will be flowing will be captured in this test file So now all the traffic will be captured in a test file. In order to stop the capture you can use control C. So it has captured 14 packets and it is saved in, it is saved in the same directory where you have run this command. In, in order to check that file you can use dir command. So here we have the file and in order to open it you can use uh, cat command. So it will show all the traffic which has been captured and in order to remove the file you can use rm command so by this way you captured uh, the uh, the dump in a in a text file if you want to do it in a in a you know in a in a in a packet capture file which you can analyze using any packet capturing tool then you can use minus w command with the file name once you run this command, it will uh, it will create a uh, capture file which can be analyzed by a capturing tool like Wireshark. So, and uh, this is the way to capture. Th uh, this, these are the different way to capture the traffic using TCP dump utility, and it gives same output as we have analyzed in the Wireshark. I hope this video is helpful for you. If you have any queries, please post it in the comment section. Thank you.